I want to kick off by asking you about the move by the EU finally to sanction the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Is this just a long time in coming? Well, you know, at the Manama Dialogue last year, Mrs. van der Leyen, in her introductory speech to the audience there, said that we have finally awakened to the dangers from Iran. It's taken them 40 years to do that. And I think it's because of these drones going over Ukraine and hitting civilians and so on, something that we have been suffering from for the last three or four years. So it's good that they have awakened, but they need to do more. Yeah, and moving fast enough in your mind? Well, European Union is, is a snail space uh, movement. So that was something Ukraine started last year and they discovered that Iran was behind the drones thrown at them, and they took the action. So that's pretty quick for the union. Tell me this. We're looking at a situation today where those in the West, 40 countries have sanctioned Vladimir Putin over his invasion of Ukraine, but the rest of the world, frankly, looks at this conflict and says, this isn't our fight. How do you describe that disconnect? I think there is a, an issue of double standard here, especially by the West over the Ukraine war. You know, I can speak for the kingdom. The kingdom voted for the United Nations General Assembly against the Russian invasion and against the acquisition of territory by force by Russia. But the same should apply to other places, like Palestine, for example. Israel is an occupying force on Palestine, and yet they don't treat Israel like they want us to treat Russia. Iran is interfering in all of our countries, yet they're, they're trying to make a deal with Iran. So this double standard, I think, is what makes others a bit wary or a bit reluctant to fully accept the arguments coming from the West. But you fought Russia in Afghanistan. Do you believe that they are today a bad actor in the world? Look, invasion of any country is a bad action. Russia's conduct in Syria was horrible. They literally raised cities to help who? Bashar al-Assad, who is the biggest executioner of Syrians. So these are bad actions, and I cannot uh, describe them in any other way. Yeah. In your mind, is the West on the wrong foot or going down the wrong path when they are attempting to give the Ukrainians more and more weapons? I'm not in government circles, so I'm not being fed with information as to what it is exactly they are giving and what it is that they're not. But whatever they're giving is not going to end the conflict. Russia is not going to accept defeat in Ukraine. My worry is that if they do feel that they're being defeated, that they might escalate to what is a horrific uh, scenario, which is the use of nuclear weapons. That is something that we should all work to avoid. And a friend of mine last night at a dinner where such discussions were taking place said, why isn't the world holding a conference for peace in Ukraine? What is holding them back? They've had conferences on peace everywhere. Why not on Ukraine? And this is a good question to ask. Mm. Those who are sacrifi sacrificing Ukrainian lives should also be working to end the fighting so that no more lives will be, will be shed. And you're talking about Mr. Zelensky? Well, I'm talking more about the West. They're the ones who should be calling for a peace conference. Mm. They're the ones who should negotiate with the Russians. You were in government during the Cold War. Do you see this as the same type of scenario? It's different. Um, during the Cold War, there was a sense of, of, of balance between horrific potentials which was the, the nuclear holocaust that might come of a conflict between the Soviet Union and the West. Now we see that there is uh, these small fires being allowed and in Ukraine, as I said, it is going to continue. The dripping in of, of uh, German tanks or uh, uh, American missiles is not going to give Ukraine victory. It's simply going to wear out to the Russians for a long time without any end in sight. Mm. And that's why I say there is a need But to they call. finally left Afghanistan after many years of similar well, 
policy from the West, no? From the United States and Saudi Arabia? I think the, the breakdown of the Soviet Union was more the reason for them leaving Afghanistan than, than the, what was being given to the Mujahideen, although it was costing them a lot. I don't know if Russia is capable to, per, to pursue this war forever, but whatever it is, the need for peace is now. Yeah. One of the questions I think that most of us uh, who cover energy markets have been asking is one of which, why is it that OPEC plus countries, who all believe that the world is going to continue to need fossil fuels, they're going to need oil, they're need, going to need gas, and in the second half of this year, presumably, as Chinese demand comes back right. online, why they're not pumping enough to satisfy that demand? Well, OPEC plus is seeking for a stability in the oil markets. It's not seeking either to raise prices nor to allow them to fall so that other countries will suffer from it, especially the oil producers. The balance is being struck now. As you saw after the decision back in October or September, when people were saying the oil prices will go up to 150 if you reduce the 2 million barrels or so on, the price remained stable. And so the need for increasing Oil, oil production will come when the Russian, when the Chinese demand will rise. OPEC Plus, and particularly Saudi Arabia, is always willing to meet the necessary uh, demand worldwide, not just because of China. Uh, so this is something I just came from a, from a, a session on, on energy, and what struck me there is that there are still people in the West, particularly, who are saying that you must stop any investment in oil and, and gas. They're just being, I don't know, blind to the facts that you cannot avoid to stop using oil and gas for another decade or two decades or three decades, as Mr. Biden himself finally said in the uh, uh, State of the Union message. And if he is saying that, and he was the one who declared war on fossil fuels when he became president, well, others should follow suit. Do you think it's a bit contradictory that those who are calling on OPEC plus members to pump more um, are at the same time telling their own producers don't? <laughs> well, uh, it's not just, how can I put it? it it's uh, hypocritical. And I think they should mind what they say. Your Royal Highness, thank you as always for joining CNBC. Thank you.